Hello everyone and welcome to this first video in a series on .NET 6 as .NET Core MVC. In this first video, I want to give you a project overview. And then in future videos, I might cover, um, or I am going to cover in the next video, Entity Framework Core, adding a database uh, via code first. And then uh, probably if there's time in this video, I also want to add uh, some nice front end with Bootstrap and some notifications with Toaster.js. Maybe that's going to be in a separate video, but that's something I'm going to cover. Then I think I want to go with some authentication and a bunch of other stuff. This first video is just about the project overview. Now, a bit first, why .NET 6? Well, some of the things that I like about it is that it's open source, it's cross-platform, cross and it has built-in dependency injection, which if you don't know what that is, trust me, that's nice. And it has great performance. <laughs> Professional uh, date and photo text here. Uh, extra points if you notice that. <laughs> All right, so let's start up. So for this, you will need to have Visual Studio 2022 installed, which comes with .NET 6 long term long term support long. <laughs> Long term support. <laughs> I'm using the enterprise version, but you can use the standard. It's fine for what we're going to do. So after you've installed it, you start it up and you will say create new project. And from this list here, you want to find model view controller as the core app. You can see it here, but it's because of a user. So you will probably won't have it out here. If you have trouble finding it, just search dot mvc up here and you will be able to find it here it's the one with in parentheses mvc uh, model view controller click next now the website we're going to build is going to be a database that has a list of all the miniatures that we own for our dungeons and dragons hobby or warhammer or whatever tabletop game that you guys like to play now of course it can be anything that you guys want. It could be a list of books or uh, something like this. It could hold whatever data you want. Uh, from uh, my point of view, I'm going to create a table that contains some of the minis that I own. Um, and then we can build upon that in future videos. So I like my project and solution to be different in the name. So I'm going to delete the web from down here. So the solution is just going to go minis your collection. And the project, which is the site, is going to call Miniature Collection Web. Oh, by the way, I want to mention here, this is the location of your code. So for me, um, I have my stuff in just a C, and then under Repos. So yeah, that's my folder. It's going to create a new folder there called Miniature Collection. So here, the framework is .NET 6. Authentication, none. We're going to add that later. And HTTPS, we want to keep. So then you type create. Now it's going to create the project. So this video, now I will go over what all of these things mean and what you should think about because we're going to use all these things individually in the future videos. I just want to give you guys an overview so you have so you have a great foundation for when we start up. What I want to start out with though is to cr starting up the website for you guys to show what it does here by default and it will help me explain some of the things. So now because of the certification is not proper properly set we get here, so I'm going to say accept the risk and force it. That's Danish. Accept the risk and continue. So this is the basic website. Nothing really interesting going on, but it's you know decent enough. What I would like you guys to notice though is up here the port seven two nine five, home, and privacy. The URL how it's built up here. Let me first open this. So this is uh, how it launched our website. Now was the default. If you see here. I can't see it now, but I'm going to see it when I stop it. So the port, HTTPS port here is 7295. HTTP would be 5295. But now it will redirect to HTTPS. 
So let's close this. Close this. And you see here miniature web collection, and you also have something called an ISS Express in here. I'm gonna go over that when we get to that part, but it's down here in properties. First though, the connected services we don't really have to worry about now, so just don't think about that. Um, but basically it's like if you connect to Asia or something like this, it would come up here. Dependencies, if you have any um, um, NuGet packages installed, which we are going to have, or if you have any references to other projects or something like this, it would pop up here in, uh, in uh, dependencies. And in the next video, I'm going to cover how to install NuGet packages, because we're going to install to be able to initialize our database. Properties has our launch settings, which then has the profiles on how to start our website. So you see here, Miniature Collection Web is this one. Let's start in CNB, and here's the port. And then notice here, Environment Variable. As the core environment. So what environment are we in development? Why is this important? It's because we also have our, some app settings and in the program which starts and configures the, the app slash site, you can set behaviors based on what environment you're in. So development, you would have all you need for be able to do a better development process. So for example, you would have, you could have a different error page that showed more, uh, information. So it would be easier for you to debug. You wouldn't, of course, have that to the user. That stuff you can set up based on the development and also the, any connection strings or any sort of static secret keys you would have um, would go into this app settings and then based on development. So if I fold it out, you can see there's development. You can add quality and so there's nested on this quality or production you could add. For now, we just have development. But yeah, basically for now, launch settings, controls, uh, how the website is started. Uh, the WW root folder here. I'm gonna close this now. The WW root folder over here has all of our static um, files. So any style sheets, the CSS, any JavaScript, and now any libraries that we're gonna uh, use. So Bootstrap. This already uses Bootstrap. We're gonna use a different theme later and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you. It has some jQuery stuff. We're also going to add a bit of that. But this is the root folder of the site and has all the static files. Now, the next three folders here kind of belong together and it's the reason we call it MVC. It's the Model View Controller. As a top overview of this, what I want you to take away is that um, the model is basically what represents the shape of our data. So all the data in our application and the, so it could be like a table in our database or a DTO, like this is a DTO. It holds some information. Um, yeah, of course you can, it has more complexity, but that's the basics. Uh, the view, the views we have down here represents the user interface, so the HTML and CSS, so whatever you see on the website with your eyes, when you click a button and you send a request to a controller, this happens via the view. So now what did I say, send a request? So a button, you can send a request to the controller, which is what happened when we press the menu. And the controller handles any user requests and acts as an interface between the view and the model. So if you remember the URL, it had home, which represent the home controller, and the privacy, which was then the privacy action. So it would execute the privacy action result here, which then returns a view. And what view is that? It's under the home folder and privacy. So now you say, okay, this doesn't look like a full web page. Where's the menu? Where's the footer? all that stuff. Well, that's because we have something called shared views and we have a shared view called layout, which is basically all the pages is the layout and that is defined within this view start. So this defines the default master page for our website. And this can actually be overridden on each page itself by putting it on the top 
Uh, so, for example, um, if we go into privacy, under the view data here, if you wanted to specify, you could actually say layout equals uh, no layout dot CSHTML. Of course, we don't have something called that, so... But yeah, basically, so you would add any custom layout here if you wanted to. But we're going to keep it as the default. And it's defined in here. The view imports uh, is also important to note because any models uh, that you add here can be accessed from other pages. So... Um, It mentions here also tag helper. So what's a tag helper? A tag helpers are bindings and tags uh, that are provided by Microsoft, Microsoft and are similar to Angular, which basically helps us uh, navigate. So let's uh, go to layout. So here, for example, this is a tag helper. Asp area, Asp controller. So what controller is it? It's in the home controller. The action is index. So action privacy. So that's how it knew. So it, the controller was home. Uh, you wouldn't actually, since this is a layout, you have to specify. But let's say we were inside privacy. If you add this, you wouldn't have to tell it that it's the home controller. It knew based on the folder. But we're going to go into details about that later. But that's basically the uh, MVC stuff. And as we add things, it's going to make more sense. And if you want me to go into more detail about this stuff in particular, you just let me know down in the comments and I will absolutely do that for you guys um app settings i mentioned this a bit earlier and uh, basically x uh, uh, app settings stores any secret keys and it can have different app settings for the environments uh, locally um so the app settings the development which is the like the environment we set now as our default when we develop here it would have you you would put the database connection strings in here for example and we're going to do that in the next video so that's all handled uh, from this and now what you can see is probably the most important file here is the program the cs file and this is responsible for running the application if you have touched any previous version of .net core you might have noticed there was something called a startup and a configuration file and that was basically this split into these two, but now it's one. Uh, so here you configure the HTTP pipeline. You set up any uh, services uh, if you want for you to use for uh, dependency injection is done here. Um, and to begin with, which is something we're going to use, because we use Razor Pages, the CHHTML files or Razor Pages, we're going to add this which will enable the hot reloading and other things for uh, Razor Pages. So just add that. That's very nice. Uh, yeah. So a bit in detail about what this does. The order in which things are added here is very important. And no better way is this highlighted than by the routing here. So first we enable routing and then we set a root the default route here. Uh, another example would be if you would like to uh, have some login or something, you would have to have authentication, which is not the same as authorization, but authorization is a prerequisite for authentication. So you couldn't do this, let's say have it up here. It has to be after uh, authorization, so this would throw an error. But anyway, we're not going to do that now. Just leave it like this. So here you can see it sets up the HTTP redirect, the use of our static files, and the default route here. Controller. So in the URL, basically how it would check. So it will first check the first part. It's going to assume is the controller. Second part, it's going to assume is the action. Last part, it will assume is some sort of parameter, an ID. Um, so if you send in the number three here, it will, so it would, if it would be home slash privacy slash three, it would go to the home controller, look for privacy, and then it would have, you know, if we had like this, 
Oh, not in three, lol. Then it would uh, throw in the three in this one. Yeah. That's the basic um, program, pro basic program, basic MVC proje project structure. And we're going to build on top of this in the next episode by adding some database um, uh, via internet, entity framework core. Uh, yeah. And we're going to go into it some more details like for example controllers what's an action result exactly uh, I'm going to talk about that in the next video uh, but basically uh, no yeah let's keep it for the next video I don't want to go into too much detail now if you've watched this far I want to thank you guys a lot because attention uh, and time is not something that's a lot of these days so thank you so much for your time and attention in this video and I look forward to showing you the next video where we're going to add a nice database and make our website look pretty also. So thank you very much. Please leave a like and a comment. And if you have any suggestions for improvements in the video, I would like to know also. I love improving and learning. So thank you guys very much and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.